Hey, I'm Marty Cohn, and this is BCTV's Meet the Candidates 2020, sponsored in part by Brattleboro Savings and Loan. This series affords you an opportunity to hear from the folks running for elected office. Today, our guest is Representative Laura Sibilia, an independent candidate for state representative for the Wyndham Bennington District. Welcome, Representative. Hi, Marty. It's so great to be back here with you. Okay. Well, I know you're a busy person, so let's delve right in here. Um, first question, why are you running for re-election as state representative? Well, uh, you know, <clears throat> I originally um, put my name forward because I thought that there were um, challenges that we were facing in uh, the district that I represent um, and in really rural Vermont and, and Vermont as a whole that I could be um, helpful in trying to bring about solutions for. And uh, I think I have been helpful um, in, in bringing about solutions and highlighting issues that are really important to um, my district. And um, I'm interested in continuing to work on those. Um, we have some pretty significant efforts underway um, around broadband, um, around uh, our utilities around education that I've um, that I have worked really hard on with um, uh, with the administration and my colleagues, and um, I think that <clears throat> we can continue um, to make good strides forward for rural Vermont um, the next session. So that's why I'm running, um, and I think that we need. Um, I think that we have an obligation <clears throat> to serve our communities. Um, each of us in, um, in, in whatever way um, we can. And this is a way that I can. Um, I also serve on my school board. Um, so there you go. All right. Well, so, um, you know, what separates you from the other candidate running for the office? So uh, I bring, I think, a pretty... Um, a pretty eclectic group of experiences uh, to to this uh, to the work um, that I do uh, on behalf of our um, our district. Um, I have uh, worked for a long time um, uh, in the hospitality industry, and so uh, I understand what uh, what it is like to um, <clears throat> try and exist in a tourism industry. You know, I'm a mom uh, with kids. Uh, they're all, they've all graduated now, but I understand um, why we have to have a high quality uh, education. I'm a taxpayer. I understand why, um, why we need to have um, a return on our taxpayer investments that, um, that feels like it's worth it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, I, I live in um, <clears throat> I live in a part of um, uh, Vermont that has seen kind of a long, slow decline uh, in the economy for the last 20, 25 years. And and I have worked with a number of folks from around the region and around the state um, on strategies, longer term strategies to turn that around to really understand what has been affecting um, our our district and our state, the rural parts of our state, and how we can uh, how we can turn that around. Uh, so, <clears throat> in addition, um, I have a really uh, have a large family with um, you know uh, a lot of um, experiences that they bring. We have a military family. I have um, my daughters in the military, my son-in-law, um, <clears throat> and I have a son in college and. You know, a mom who is um, retired, and so you know, I, I think there are a number of different perspectives that um, I bring. Um, I bring with me when I'm in the state house, and I'm always thinking about policy um, considerations in front of us, <clears throat> with how they relate to um, people that I know or people that have talked to me uh, and, and helped me understand how they are being affected. So, I think that depth of experience um, helps me. It helps the body. It helps our district. 
That's I think okay, well, what differentiates me. I agree. Well, so so uh, you know you you've you've um, run it run a few times. Um, this is your I think your your this will be your fourth. Yes. Um, so I have to ask you, if you're reelected, what are your top two <laughs> priorities? Mm-hmm. Top two. Uh, well, <clears throat> I have um, my top two uh, are uh, educational equity, uh, and and that relates to taxpayers as well, um, and and broadband, of course. You know, these are issues, uh, and with broadband, I might broaden that just a little bit to say, you know, rural infrastructure, um, you know, mo- the modernization of rural infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> With, um, with education, um, I have been um, a leading voice around the equity issue um, that has affected um, not only rural Vermont, but, um, but also poor, but poor, poor Vermont as well. So districts that are um, small, uh, not densely populated or have extreme poverty, um, have really been harmed for about two decades, and uh, we had <clears throat> we had um, been pushing uh, on this issue. And um, I think I've spoken with you about the, the quote unquote waiting study. That's you know how we count students. Um, and uh, we received a report last year that says that the way that we count students is um, basically um, we are subsidizing, um, paying more <clears throat> for students who need less dollars and um, charging <clears throat> and providing less dollars for students who need more dollars. Um, so uh, because of COVID, we had a pretty, we had a pretty big coalition the week actually um, of the, that the state of emergency happened. We had gathered a number of folks um, from around Wyndham County, from the kingdom, from Burlington, um, together in the state house, um, looking at uh, you know having a press conference and talking about the need for um, action on this waiting study, which calls for different counting of students, which would also have the effect of um, addressing property taxes. And then we had COVID, and we knew that this would be a a fight. There is um, there is. Uh, at least one individual who is adamantly opposed in the house to taking action on this. Um, and it's really difficult uh, Zoom in the Zoom legislature to have, um, have a big fight uh, over, over Zoom. You're, you're literally holding people hostage um, in that way. So while we pushed and pushed and pushed on this, <clears throat> we definitely did not get the um, the action that was necessary, the action that must happen. Um, and so that will be something that I will be pushing on extremely uh, hard in the coming session. Um, and as I said, broadband um, and rural infrastructure, um, <clears throat> when we look at we, you know, the, the work that we've done so far um, around broadband has basically told Vermonters, no one's coming to save them. We need you to step forward and Vermonters have done so in an unbelievable way. Um, We've been creating tools and resources to help support that effort, trying to push um, both providers and uh, utilities towards these uh, CUDs, the communication union districts that these volunteers are are standing up. Um, And so uh, continuing to um, evolve that out, help, uh, help these uh, three different types of entities move forward so that we can um, finance and build out uh, the, the, the last mile. And it's my hope that that's something that can be largely done um, in the next four to six years. And I think it can be if we can find a successful model um, with, the, um, with those three uh, entities. <clears throat> Okay. Well, they, they, <laughs> all right. There's, there's two. Now I, I just want to ask you, I just want to ask you about a couple of other issues. Um, if you're reelected, what would you do to ensure that more Vermont families with young children can find and afford childcare? Yeah. So this is 
what, what we call kind of a wicked problem. I mean, there are so many different elements that are, that are um, coming into play in this that need to be solved. Um, it's not like you can solve one thing. We've got workforce challenges, we've got rate of pay, um, we've got the education requirements, we've got demand, we've got geographics, um, geography, excuse me. Um, so uh, a couple of things that I think could be helpful. Um, <clears throat> one, I would say, um, though uh, the governor has alluded on more than one occasion to this notion of kind of uh, cradle to college. Um, and so I know he's got his eye on the education fund um, in looking at that. Um, and I would imagine that child care, after school care um, <clears throat> is envisioned to be a larger part of that. I would not necessarily be opposed to that if we had fi if we fix the student counts. Um, but right now it's so out of whack. Our you know our rural, as I said, our rural and poor students are being harmed, and our taxpayers in those towns are being harmed. So that's uh, one way <clears throat> I think that can help. Another uh, another thing that I um, am more and more curious about is how we can help um, employers um, consider. Uh, either opening uh, up their own centers um, or or really subsidizing in a larger way these centers. And with the you know with the labor shortage that we have had, I think that there is uh, a growing demand or a growing yeah there's a growing demand for qualified work workers. And I think employers um, are more and more motivated. And historically, I think we have seen um, in the past we had seen more employers providing childcare. You know. At, at their establishment, and so, you know, looking at <clears throat> looking at opportunities there to incentivize um, incentivize and support employers getting much more um, engaged in that financially um, and tactically. All right. Well, so now now let me ask you about the other end of the age spectrum. Um, Recent reports indicate that seniors in Vermont face one of the highest rates of financial insecurity in the nation. How do you think we can make life for seniors more affordable? So uh, I definitely think that um, the property tax issue um, and expensive, outdated um, utilities, uh, particularly in rural areas, uh, it, it affects that. You know, I think uh, we probably would see a different kind of cost of living uh, for folks in rural Vermont as opposed to, you know, folks in retired folks in Burlington. Um, so, <clears throat> property tax, um, uh, I think more we can do to uh, deal with the property tax issues um, and education in general, get more transparent, more accountable. Um, more equitable, um, I think that that could be extremely helpful. And um, yes. All right. So, all right. Now, um, let's let's be optimistic about the fact that we're going to uh, emerge from from the throes of the co of COVID. What what would be your vision for Vermont in a post COVID world? So interesting, interesting um, question. Uh, right after COVID happened, we had um, several of us who lead or have led the Rural um, Economic Development Caucus in the House um, got together for, a, a, for you know, a couple of weeks, um, just repeatedly uh, asking ourselves, um, what had COVID um, shown us that we did not um, no, before. What were we learning? Um, what were the truths that were being um, revealed? Um, and so uh, in a post-COVID world, I hope that we will, um, we will invest in the things that we've learned. Um, you know, things like, um, you know, we, the broadband issue, I mean, you know, I don't know how many times we have to underscore how urgent the need is, but certainly um, we have done that. So I hope that we can see serious investment in that. It affects healthcare, it affects access to government, it, it affects 
justice, public safety, educate, uh, you know, all your ability to participate in your job remotely. So, um, so, so key. <clears throat> um, things like we actually as a state don't have the ability to speak to our second homeowners that, who are investors um, in Vermont. So the state of Vermont does not have a means of reaching out to our second homeowners and saying, hey, it's not really safe to come here. Here's what we're thinking and talking about. I mean, there's no means of doing that um, in any in any uh, way. So I, I hope that we um, can see more of that. Um, you know, we we've seen how fragile a number of our systems are. Um, you know, our our, our health care systems, our child care systems, um, and and. Um, and also we've seen, you know, some pretty incredible resilience. So um, I hope that we build off of uh, all of the truths that we have learned um, as a result of COVID. All right, well, last question for me is, what do you want voters to know about you? So I want voters to know that uh, I am accessible. I am always uh, uh, going to tell you exactly what I think. Uh, I will always listen. Um, <clears throat> and I work really hard. And uh, as an independent, uh, it is impossible for me to get any thing done at all, unless I am willing to work with uh, Democrats, Republicans, progressives in the House, uh, with, with both the governor's office and, um, and the speaker's office. And, and I do, and I'm able to. Uh, and I think that's important. And I think there's value to that, both to my district and to our government in general. I think it's helpful to have uh, folks that are willing to work with everyone um, and also willing to press everyone um, and say no to everyone. Um, it's an interesting uh, place to be <clears throat> as an independent. Um, you know, folks are either <laughs> disappointed or really pleased with you um, and that who that is changes uh, with every vote. So, um, but I'm approachable and, and it is so important to me that um, I hear from folks and uh, you know, I wanna solve problems. So I wanna hear from my district, I wanna hear from Vermonters and then I wanna work with you to solve whatever the challenge is, if it's possible that you're facing. I'm a big picture thinker. Um, so think more about systems and that type of thing, so. Great. Well, Representative Laura Sibilia, an independent candidate for state representative for the Wyndham Bennington District, thank you for being on the show. Marty, thanks so much for doing this series. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, you can learn more by visiting the campaign website, uh, www.laurasibeliavt.com. That's laurasibeliavt.com. The general election is Tuesday, November 3rd. Remember, you can vote early in person, you can vote absentee by mail, you could vote absentee hand delivered on election day, whichever way works for you, please vote. Thanks for watching Meet the Candidates 2020, sponsored in part by Brattleboro Savings and Loan. I'm Marty Cohn, stay healthy.